sophisticated buyers, yes, we open the mind by tap dancing on the unconscious. But before they're going to part with 5,000, 15,000, whatever it is you're charging, they will definitely want to justify that purchase prior to paying you that money. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi, and welcome to the My Future Business Show. My name's Rick Nusky, and I am so glad to have you with us today. I have on the line with me, Mr. Tom Poland from Leedsology. How are you, Tom? I'm a box of fluffy ducks, thank you, Rick, and thanks so much for having me on your show. Absolutely. Look, uh, for everybody who's listening, we just had some technical issues that um, Tom was uh, um, polite enough to allow us to try this again. So thank you very much, Tom. No problem. I live in a digital age, and I am so very well aware that these little things called technology gremlins play havoc with us sometimes. <laughs> Don't they just? For sure and certain. So uh, what's been happening with your life? Oh, life is good. Look, I'm sitting in my home office here, which is my only office, I'm pleased to say, on the sand on the beach at Little Castaways Beach in Queensland, Australia. And um, I work four days a week. I work pretty hard when I work, but I work four days a week. I play tennis five times a week, walk on the beach with my wife and dog. Uh, definitely in that order Beautiful. Uh, and uh, the sun is shining the birds are singing and I'm above the ground so so that's what's been happening yeah no I like that saying it's like it's almost like uh, look I've got two feet and a heartbeat can't complain that's it um, <laughs> Rick I had uh, three brain hemorrhages 18 months ago oh, wow. uh, over the space of 10 days one of these little suckers kills 50% of the people that have it and uh, brain damage is permanently 41% so I had three of them and I'm survived and I'm better than I ever was. So I, I'm, I'm very grateful to be here and have yeah. this conversation with you. No, look, it, it definitely uh, reinforces the idea of I've uh, got two feet and a heartbeat, can't complain, doesn't it? Ab absolutely. We should be grateful for every day we have above ground. Absolutely. So what's, what's been happening with your business leadsology? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, what's been happening is it's gone kind of ballistic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the best way I can explain it is that I heard, I heard someone interviewed once and they, they were, had been, you know, become very successful individual. And it was asked, well, how, how did that happen? You know, how did you, how did you get to be so successful? And there was a pause while he reflected on it. And he said, he's just incredibly slowly. He said, and then, then suddenly, and, and Leedsology is a bit like that, you know, 30, 33, mm -hmm. 34 years of slowly, but then suddenly. And it reminds me of a, I went to hear a speaker once and I don't remember his name, but he was on the stage. It was a big, you know, big auditorium and there was hundreds of people there and he had a, a really big glass beaker on mm -hmm. a desk, on a, on a table on the stage and it was full of clear water and he got a red, like a little dropper, you know, those little things you squeeze the top and a little drop comes out the bottom yep. and it was full of red dye. And he, and he said, you know, he started and he said, you know, can you see the clear glass and in, in, clear water in the glass? And everyone says, yeah, 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 yeah. And so he puts one drop of red dye in the water. And he says, do you, do you notice any difference? No, no difference. So he does another drop, another drop, another drop. And about the seventh time, he puts a drop in the water and suddenly the water went from being completely clear to pink and red. And it was just that extra drop. And I think that's how I describe leadsology. It was just another drop and suddenly it goes boom. That tipping point moment. Tipping point. That's a great way to describe it. So what does leadsology um, do for their customers? Okay. So the best way I can describe this is, is, you know, my clients are professionals, marketing, software services or advice. They wake up on a Monday morning. Mm -hmm. They grab a coffee and they open up their laptop or start their desktop up and they look at their calendar for the week. And they notice that there are inbound bookings that people have made who want to talk with them about becoming a client. And that's what Leadsology does. But it goes a bit further than that. These bookings that have been made by prospective ideal clients, those people are aware of the fees that my client charges. They know how my client works with their clients and, and they like that. And probably most importantly is they regard my client as 
if not one of the very best choices, possibly the only valid or desirable choice. And that's what Leadsology produces. It produces, at the end of the day, produces these inbound bookings from people who are highly qualified, who want to know about becoming a client. Fantastic. I've been looking at some of your breakdown and obviously I review um, your website. I've, I, I see that you've been on stage with the likes of Michael Gerber of the Emuth um, background, Richard Koch mm-hmm. from the 8020 principle and Brian Tracy and others. Tell us a little bit about uh, your experience with speaking events. Well, I, I, you know, I love speaking events. Uh, my wife says when I go to the, the fridge at midnight to get something to eat and the uh, you know, I open the doors and the light comes on. It's like, oh, ta-da, the light's on. You know, I've, I've got to perform now. Um, so I, I'm just one of these weird, you know, there are a few of us around that enjoy, uh, we're egotistical enough to enjoy being behind a microphone and, and pretending that people want to hear what we want to say. So I do enjoy public speaking. I enjoy the challenge of it, the, the thrill of it, I suppose, and the ability, the privilege to be able to communicate something that might make a difference to people's lives and that can also make me some money. Let's be honest. You know, it's, it's, I think for me, it's about those two things. Help people and make some money while you do it. That's not like a marriage. There's no made in heaven. Yep. So, and, and, and in the interests of uh, walking the talk and being genuine and authentic and open and transparent, I don't do a lot of public speaking. Maybe twice a year, someone makes an inquiry, says, look, we've got a conference. Can you speak about marketing at the conference? And if it's the right opportunity and it fits the schedule, absolutely. But I don't chase the business. So, yeah, I've spoken on international speaking platforms with some really, truly remarkable people, and it's been a privilege to do that. But mm-hmm. it's not the core of what I do. I don't generate, I don't go out to seek generate business from public speaking. It happens, it happens, it's nice. But to be honest, I'm pretty happy sitting on the sand here, my beach, you know, my beach house, uh, and I, I don't get out too much. So for anyone who is listening today, we're going to deep dive into marketing and marketing messages that aren't working and things of that nature. So stick around because at the end of the end of the call, Tom's going to um, share a little bit, a bit more about how you can make contact with him. But right now, Tom, marketing seems to be changing. The, the ecosystem seems to be changing and marketing messages are not as effective as they used to be. Can you tell us why that might be happening? Sure. Well, I guess it's a combination of two things, one which was predated the internet and the other which is postdated. Mm-hmm. The thing that predated is that most people, and why would they, most people don't know how to create a marketing message that's going to achieve the two things a marketing message must achieve. And for marketing message, most people might know this as a unique sales proposition or USP or elevator pitch. But essentially, it's that thing that someone reads or they hear and it motivates them to do something, take action, uh, enroll for an event or uh, buy a book or buy a product or a program. And the reason that 99% of them don't work is, first of all, is we are now bombarded with marketing message thanks to Facebook ads and banners. It doesn't matter if it's offline or online. The noise and the volume of marketing messages has increased probably tenfold since 2000 and three odd when the internet really came of age. Mm-hmm. So that's one factor and that's, that is a recent phenomenon. But the factor which predates the, the internet is that people haven't figured out how to create a marketing message that achieves two things. One is to get the cut through. In other words, it's so differentiated it gets noticed. Mm-hmm. And, and secondly, to motivate people to take action, whatever that action might be. And that comes down to desirability. So what we're after here is differentiated desirability and that's what it takes to get a marketing message working. And we spoke about this earlier, and I'd love to go back over it because I think it's very relevant, is that, that idea that when I drive down the road, I see all these marketing messages on billboards, but because there are so many of them, I actually don't take notice of any of them. What is that phenomena? It's called your reticular activating system, or RAS as it's known, and it's a certain mm-hmm. part of the brain which filters in and filters out, and what it filters in is is pain and pleasure essentially or, or or threats and opportunities what it filters out is anything that's not relevant that's why we end up with billboard blindness that's why we ended up with with uh, banner blindness with facebook ads and so on is that the reticular activating is, is filtering out the stuff that we already know that's not a threat or not the promise of an opportunity it's like if you put a little sign up on your bathroom mirror saying you know brush for three minutes or something mm-hmm. and you go in the morning think oh that's right i got to brush for three minutes Well, after about seven or eight days, your reticular activating system will filter that out because it's going, we already know that. It's no longer relevant. 
Yeah. Just the same way I, you know, I, I got seduced into buying a beautiful car called a, it's actually a Kia uh, Sportage platinum version. Mm -hmm. And it's a seven year warranty. And it's got everything that opens and shuts. So I go into the dealership. I test drive this car. It's a beautiful ruby red car. I drive out of the dealership having never even heard of this car before, let alone <laughs> see it. And then suddenly every third freaking car on the road is a ruby red Sportage <laughs> platinum and this reticular activating system going, okay, this is important to us now to notice these cars because we've just spent 75 grand on one or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And so this is very important to us. So let me show you where they all are. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, what, my, my grandson is called is, is, is jock. Right. And so yeah. now every said, geez, I haven't heard that name for like 70 years. Now every second kid I, I hear has been christened jock. Right. Because my reticular activating system, its job is to filter in, those things that could be beneficial or things we should avoid, but to filter out those things that are not relevant to our goals presently. So this is very much in the realm of um, core psychology, but if a, a marketer or a business owner, which is you know, sometimes very different people, mm. um, do they need to become um, psychologists to become good marketers? Well, they need to understand psychology 101. And even if they don't understand it, they need to at least be aware and agree with it. Mm -hmm. uh, because marketing is, it's all psychology. It's, mm -hmm. but, it's, but it's unconscious psychology and it's conscious psychology. And to explain that, a lot of people will tell you, particularly salespeople, and I'm the world's worst salesperson, but salespeople mm -hmm. will say, well, you know, people buy an emotion and they justify it later with logic. Sure, if you're an 18 year old and you buy a course that promises to show you how you can sit on the beach with your laptop for half an hour a day and a little a million dollars wash over your beautiful mm -hmm. body, yeah, <laughs> you've probably bought on emotion and justifying it later with logic. Mm -hmm. uh, but sophisticated buyers, yes, we open the mind by tap dancing on the unconscious. But before they're going to part with 5,000, 15,000, whatever it is you're charging, they will definitely want to justify that purchase prior to paying you that money. So it's not just the unconscious we need to work with, it's the conscious mind as well when we do effective marketing. Mm. Gee, we, we know that a lot of the marketing messages are not working. Is this because we're, uh, we're living in a society, um, not just um, locally, nationally, but globally, where people are actually a little bit more sophisticated nowadays? Well, certainly people get exposed to a lot more marketing messages, but they don't notice most of them because of the reticular activating system mm. that we've talked about. I, I, the, the ineffectiveness of marketing messages is not a new phenomenon. It's been going on forever because people, well, you mentioned it before, you know, business owner or marketing person can be two different people. So mm -hmm. if someone is a consultant and they've learned their consulting trade, doing an MBA and working in corporates and then maybe they went out on their own and they, just take a consultant, for example, when did they ever have any marketing training? Maybe they went to a one day workshop. I don't know. Maybe they did a downloadable Facebook study course, but probably mm -hmm. they haven't learned stuff that's going to be particularly effective. So how would they know? It's not their fault. That's what I'm saying is because no one's showing them how to do an effective marketing message, mm -hmm. um, which I should probably tell you how to do that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah, audience yeah, members. So, so every, every single, lead that's ever been generated in the history of mankind has been generated when two things have intersected. One of those two things is an ideal client. And my definition of an ideal client is that someone who is aware of their need for what you've got. They may not be aware specifically that you could supply something that would help them with their need, but they are aware. In my case, they're aware they need some lead gen, right? Mm -hmm. So they're aware of the need for what you've got. They can afford what you're offering and the timing is perfect. That's why we call them an ideal client. Mm -hmm. When that person is intersected with an effective marketing message, then a lead is generated. And an effective marketing message, like an ideal client, has three characteristics. But the characteristics are different, of course. The first is that the message must be benefit rich. Secondly, it must contain specifics because that increases both believability and desirability once it's done right. And thirdly, it must be differentiated. I talked to you before about desirable differentiation uh, and we, because we, the marketing message has to get cut through and a marketing message could be on a billboard, although my clients don't use billboards, but it could be an email subject line. It could be the title of, uh, of, of a book you're wanting to sell. Whatever that marketing message is, however it's used, it's got to get cut through to get through the reticular activating uh, system filtering process. And secondly, it's got to motivate people to want to know more. Mm. So benefit rich, contain specific and differentiated. 
uh, and, and let me give you before and after example to put some yeah, kind right. of fl flesh on the bones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, meet, meet Max. Max is a client of mine who develops software for quick service restaurants, QSRs they call them. We know them as fast food restaurants, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Subway, and so on. So this point of sale software is pretty clever stuff. But let's just say that Max is sitting, let's say he's sitting at a dinner party and he's, he's been placed next to Susan. And Susan, turns out Susan owns let's say seven McDonald's restaurants and she keeps trying to increase sales. And, you know, she's just frustrated because she keeps buying more McDonald's restaurants, but the sales level in each restaurant doesn't increase. And she's figuring, well, if I'm ever going to get a return on my investment, I got to learn how to get sales up. <laughs> and she's had, maybe she's had a little bit too much red wine and she's pouring out her challenges and problems to Max. And she's talking about how she can't get sales up and she's frustrated. And then she realizes She's probably been complaining a bit much. She puts her glass down and she turns to Max. She says, Max, I'm so sorry. I've been telling you all about my challenges. Tell me, what is it that you do for a living? And if Max comes back and says, Susan, funny you ask, because we actually, we sell point of sale software into places like McDonald's. And he's all excited about that because he senses she's a prospect and he's right. But her eyes are going to glaze over and she's going to think to herself, boy, just my luck. I get seated next, seated next to a guy who's trying to flog me some software. The last thing I need is more software. We've already got software and we upgraded our software and it didn't do any difference anyway. So she smiles weakly and says, that's nice. And she tries to change the subject to something more interesting, like, I don't know, tax audits or something like that. Whereas if you applied this formula, and made that response benefit rich and mm -hmm. it contained specifics and it was differentiated, then he might have said something like, which he does now, of course, he might have said, Well, Susan, funny you ask, we actually increased the sales in QSRs by 25% in 90 days. And oh, we can guarantee that. Now, if Susan hears that, her eyes are going to widen, and I do mean literally, physically, her eyes will <laughs> open wider because the reflector activating system has said, this is information we've been looking for. And she will involuntarily, before she even knows she said it, she will say, well, how do you do that? And by definition, the lead is generated. Now, wh what I would really invite people to notice about this mm -hmm. is that when Max said we increase the sales in QSRs by 25% within 90 days, or we can guarantee that, there was no mention of software. There was no yeah. mention of his service or what he does. Or, and Susan doesn't care. At that point, the marketing message has done its job. It's cut through and it's motivated. That's the end of its existence. That's the end of its purpose. Now, Max better be able to deliver on that promise, right? Otherwise, mm -hmm. he's just going to burn out clients and get bad karma and all the rest of it. But the marketing message has done its job because it got cut through and it motivated, it elicited a lead and inquiry came in. Now, that's an informal setting, and it's, but it's a good example Mm. of how to transform what you might normally say or what might you want me to write uh, in a marketing message uh, to actually get cut through and elicit a response. Is this um, th what you call the titanium triangle with inside of your book? No, but thank you for raising the issue because mm -hmm. the marketing message has to be used, right? Otherwise it's useless. And mm. so what the titanium triangle is about, it's about a model which guarantees provided you can deliver value of course <laughs> yeah. but it guarantees what i call indestructible business growth so titanium because titanium is indestructible uh and it's also more valuable than gold so uh, the triangle because the three sides to creating an indestructible marketing or lead generation system mm -hmm. the three sides are first of all we want to do something every single week that builds a an email subscriber list or a postal list if your market is going to be postal based. So every single week, something happens where your list grows with new subscribers. That's the first side of the triangle. Second tri side of the triangle is that every single week, people in that list get some good value, quality content to keep them engaged and interested in staying a subscriber. Mm -hmm. That could be in the form of a podcast or a blog or a webinar or something like that. That happens every single week of the year. And the third thing that happens every single week of the year, the third part of our titanium triangle is that there is a group of people who receive a call to action, a direct response offer, which for most of my clients is book a time to talk about seeing whether I have something here that's going to be a fit for what you need. 
a consult, we might say. But, yeah. you know, we, we talked about this before, Rick. It, it's not a free strategy session. It's not a free coaching call. Mm -hmm. It's a direct and transparent ob objective, which is to see if you want to become a client, to see if I have something here that's going to be a fit for you. It's just, an, it's just an, a conversation between two adults. It's not, you know, actually a sales trap wrapped up as a coaching call or something. It's just, let's talk and see if I've got something here that's going to help you. And that's something I really respond to and, and, and align with because it's, all, it's akin to that, um, working out whether or not there's a sale to be made rather than just pushing your, uh, your products onto someone, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, I said before, I'm the world's worst salesman. And I, and I say that with, with genuine delight, actually. Mm -hmm. Because if, you know, most of us don't want to sell someone and most of us don't want to be sold. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we like to buy uh, and we like people to buy. Absolutely, so, I love buying. <laughs> yeah, and if 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 someone in the audience listening to this, if all they had to do each week was show up and talk to people who wanted to know more about becoming a client, that would be pretty easy to do, right? Mm -hmm. And and if that someone who had made the booking to talk about becoming a client knew what our audience members' fees were, and they knew how they work with clients, and in, in broad terms at least, and they liked that. And they regarded this particular audience member we were addressing now as being probably the very best choice to help solve the problem or realize the opportunity, then you don't need to sell. No. Just remember the ideal client, the person we're looking for is already aware of the need for what you've got. I, the people I talk to, the book of time to speak with me about becoming a client, I don't have to try and convince them lead gen is a good idea because they've been through, uh, they've already put the hand up to say, I need leads. Mm. I, again, I'm looking back through our breakdown and I'm looking at the, the statement about how to uh, enjoy a weekly flow of qualified inbound, inbound inquiries without any advertising, without any cold calling and without any direct mailing. Mm. Is, this, is this something that is integrated purely online? Is this, is this purely for the online environment or can it be used offline as well? Yeah, look, you can use it offline. Uh, a lot of my clients like the fact that with my system, they can do their marketing from anywhere in the world mm -hmm. and they market to anywhere in the world that speaks the same language and has an internet connection. So I do my marketing, you know, I have clients in the UK and Germany and Spain and in North America, Canada, USA, Australia, New Zealand, mm -hmm. because I can sit on the beach here on the sand in a little beach house okay. and, and I can do my marketing. And yeah. so, so that's what I teach is I teach marketing from anywhere in the world to anywhere in the world that speaks the same language and has an internet connection. But you can do exactly the same, same thing offline. So, all so what I teach is is that as a professional offering service advice or software, all roads lead to the consult to someone finding a link. Uh, my link is bookachatwithtom.com, and I and I you know offer that just by way of example, not for people that will you know flock in their hordes to book a time to talk with me about becoming a client. But but that is a good example. Bookachatwithtom.com. So whoever's listening to this, you want to go and get book a chat with Bob, yep. Susie, whoever your name is, .com, have it redirected. You'll see my example there, book a chat with Tom.com. You'll see how I, on that page, people go there. If they want to talk about becoming a client, they, they read the page and they find out what the means going to happen, what's not going to happen, what they, the characteristics they need to possess in order to qualify. And right at the bottom of the page, they've got to check some boxes to say they agree to the deal, which is they need to, they understand how much I charge and that they can afford that. They understand how I work with clients and they like that. And then they finally check a box, another box, and then they, the link to book a time is activated. Mm. Until they right. agree to that deal, they can't find the time to book a time to talk with me. Okay. So, so all roads go to that consult for my clients. So if someone's listening to this, that's what would happen with, if you put my system into your business, you wake up on Monday morning, you see people who booked a time to talk with you and they know what your fees are, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Where do they find the link? That's the question that, that possibly we, we, I'm answering here, mm -hmm. it's most likely that they've attended an online meeting that you've presented at. And my, most of my clients have a KPI, one online meeting a week, where in my case, Thursday, 9 a.m., I present to a group of people who have registered and have turned up to find out more about lead generation. At the end of the meeting, I give them the link, bookachatwithtom.com. Go there if you want help with your lead generation, read the page, and if you agree to the terms and conditions, feel free then to book a time to have a chat. Yeah. Do you often, um, uh, well, do you advocate in certain circumstances um, 
free downloads or do you pr purely say um, for professionals to book a consult? The downloads can be a useful marketing aid, but I don't uh, offer them during that presentation right. because one of the golden rules in my marketing is you only make, give them one offer. You only give them one thing, one next step. You don't say, I, I don't, I mean, at the start of the presentation, I mentioned the fact that I'm a best selling author. So some of them can pop off to Amazon and buy the book if they want to. But by the time I've got through to the 45 minutes at the end of the presentation, there is only one call to action, which is book a chat with Tom.com. Yeah. And the reason for that is simple is I don't want someone thinking, Oh, you know what? I'll just go and buy his book first. I'll have a read of it. And then if I like that, then maybe I'll come back because it's not that that's a bad idea. It's just that they won't follow through on it. They'll get, distracted with some other shiny thing they'll go chasing yeah. and some people go month after month year after year just chasing shiny things never actually investing mm. so so i, I want to be clear and explicit with people and say this is the next best step if you're serious about lead gen let's talk and see if i've got something here that's going to be a fit for your needs and if it's not i can probably refer you somewhere else or something else but if it is we can talk about that what is the name of your book i, I haven't actually seen that yet. uh it's actually called leadsology L-E-A-D-S-ology, uh, mm -hmm. the science of being in demand. Yep. Uh, I have a new one coming out on July 31st, 2018, which is Leadsology, Marketing the Invisible. Anybody who's listening to this call today, I'm sure that Tom and I could um, just talk about this topic for hours on end. Um, so <laughs> if, you wanna, if they want to reach out to you, Tom, and, and actually have that call, where do they find you? Yeah, thank you for asking. Book a chat with Tom.com. <laughs> there you go. Tom, thank you again for your patience and willingness to uh, be on the My Future Business Show with me today. Oh, it's, a, it's a privilege to be here. Thanks for the opportunity, Rick. It's been fun having you on the call with us today. Now click on that big red subscribe button and make sure you leave us a comment, share us with your friends and join the growing list of leading entrepreneurs who have enjoyed their time on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews.